Are you sick and tired of feeling like you're screaming into a void when you're marketing your business? It doesn't have to be that way. And Dr. Michael's here today. He's going to tell us a little bit about himself, why this topic matters to him and why it should matter to you. Michael, welcome to the show. Welcome, Sean. Great to be here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you speak to, to absolutely my heart here because it's what got me started on, on that journey. Um, because, well, from my um, from my education, I'm actually a computer scientist. And um, the reason I'm today um, I'm communications coach is that, well, I, I was so frustrated with all these great ideas that haven't been heard by people because, well, they weren't communicated properly. Because there was someone who, who had a brilliant idea, who was brilliant at what he did, speaking to, to a brilliant crowd, for example, at a conference or inside a meeting in, in a company. Um, and that idea was thrown into a trash bin because nobody got the point, right? Because they were so deep into their own thoughts and the, the way that, that uh, the things that they felt passionate about that they forgot to tell us uh, and the audience why they should care about and why they sh should be as passionate about that thing. And that's what got me started. And that's why I started to write my blog and um, how people reached out and that's why I'm today here helping people find those words, right? That's amazing. It truly is. Because when you think about it, I don't think anybody would think, oh, yeah, computer science, tech, yeah, total communications person. Like, who would, mm -hmm. that's not the natural connection that people typically make. But if you actually sit in it for a minute you, and you realize, wow, how can we streamline our communication that kind of jives with tech, right? Because when, when you, you're looking for using technology and computer sciences to make life easier, to make things yeah. faster, to streamline all of your processes. So why wouldn't you want to do that with your communication? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you're totally right. Um, so so it, it usually gets me some blank stares when I tell people that I'm actually a computer scientist because, well, as you as you mentioned, computer scientists are supposed to be those pale guys sitting down in the cellar and eating pizza the whole day and never seeing even a ray of sunlight, right? <laughs> um, but, but um, uh, well, I, I think that that's not well how it is in in real life. But you're totally right that one thing that that you that that gets really great attention in in, in computer science it, science is to structure things and to prioritize things and to conquer problems from and break it down to so what's the most relevant thing here? What are we trying to achieve here? And how can we approach that thing in a way that makes the most sense and that makes the most impact? Uh, and that's certainly something that helps you when you try to make sense of your story, your product, your great idea, and want to want to figure out, so how do I get people to, to see the brilliance of that? So how do I structure that problem? How do I, um, what do I prioritize? And what's the, mo what's the thing that gives us the most impact here? Yes. And well, this and then, is so and the, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, but like, this is crucial. Like if anybody doesn't know how crucial this is to your marketing, I need to reinforce the mess. You can market for days and days. I was just saying, you could be waving your flags, all of the flags, grab whatever flags you can and wave them, wave them, wave them. If you're not waving the right flag, if your messaging isn't honed in, clear and directly addressing not only what you do, who you are, but also who you're serving and what they need, it doesn't matter. So doing that, the right thing, really honing in on what you're saying, your messaging, makes all the difference in whether whether or not you are heard, never mind the conversion that follows. Yeah, and you, you're making a great point here because, well, um, as you put it, that I mean, it's not about the flags that you like best, right? It's about so the flags that resonate with your audience, right? And 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 that you need to to make that shift in perspective. So as long as you're just focusing and 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 obsessing over all the things that you're proud of and that you you think are so great well you're you're just speaking to that to that inner voice of your in, inner inner um, genius of you but the moment that you step out to get others excited about your idea you have to ask yourself that question so what gets them excited what's the point when looking from their perspective yeah and then i i just want to bring up too suppose a bit of a question form is that when you're doing that 
you don't have to let go of the things you love, correct? You mm -hmm. can still take those things that you love, those things that you value most, and use them strategically to connect in a, in a very deep way with your prospective audience. Yeah, that that's uh, one thing that, I mean, the, the the fact that you've dug so deep that, that that you know so much about your field and that that there's so many facets to it for you that that's one of the reasons why you are so good at it right and that which enables you to nail it and get to that point but the other aspect to that is that you don't well you can stretch that out in time right the point isn't that you throw everything at your audience at once um, hoping that something sticks or even that everything sticks, which it never does. It's much more like you need to figure out your, or you want to figure out what's the one thing that makes them curious to want to hear the second thing. So what's the thing that starts us into a conversation rather than just throwing everything that, that you think is so brilliant at them and then, well, letting them just deal with it. But you, you much more want to engage in a conversation and that's, and all it takes is to, to have that one point of curiosity that sparks that conversation. That's beautiful because there's so many people who want to use marketing as a magic bullet, as a quick fix to all of their business problems. And the problem with that is that marketing really is a long-term game. We are establishing ourselves. We are making strategic connections. We are starting the conversation depending on where your audience is on their own journey within your world. And so you need to have a very multifaceted approach that gives them bite-sized pieces. What is that that people say? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time? It's the same <laughs> with marketing. Yeah, exactly. I love yeah. that. And you talk about, too, the idea of, of persuasion, because a lot of people feel really icky when it comes to marketing and sales, they're like, oh, I need to convince somebody. I need to persuade someone. But you've got a different view on that, don't you? Yeah, I mean, the whole point of persuasion is that, well, you want people to do something that they originally didn't want to do, right? Because if they w would have wanted it, you didn't have to persuade them. Um, so, um, and that essentially means that you're applying kind of a force to them, right? You're pushing them into a certain direction or pulling them um, like, um, like, like, like a magnet trying to, to well, in, 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 however you look at it, you're applying some kind of force. But force tends to create counterforce, right? We're, right? we're not, we don't like to be persuaded. So as soon as we smell that, like that marketers trying to persuade us, we're immediately becoming skeptical. And we we look for the so what what's off here? So what is he trying to hide here? Um, and I think that that a much better way or an easier way to market is to figure out what it is that people actually want in the first place. So and how what you have to offer to them gets them what they want, and how what you have to offer aligns with some probably deeper desire or struggle or aspiration that they have so that you can stop persuading them and start resonating with those things. Absolutely. It makes it's it it goes back to that starting a conversation and building the relationship. People are going to want to work with you when they know you. When they're like, "Yeah, you know what? That's a that's a good point. I do want to have this conversation with you. I do want to explore how we could potentially help one another in our lives and businesses. That's, that makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Inside and out. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not that that post that you put up that, that that should be the end of the conversation, right? That that's all you have to say. And when, when they've seen it, then all is said and done. No, it's, it's the, the next statement that you've made, which hopefully encourage them to engage deeper with you and to want to hear your next statement to connect with you to follow that page and to hear the next so that um like, like seth godin calls that that you get permission to talk to to them more yes yes i love that so much permission to talk to them more and that that goes with i mean i know i've seen so many people now it, it, i feel like it comes in waves where people will say what is up with this particular message that I'm receiving and it's across the board. Everybody gets this cold message and the message will always be the same and it will always have a link and it will always, 
instead of asking permission to talk, it's assuming that permission has already been given. And how many of us, and you can all respond in our comments and everything, how many of us go, ha, no, immediate no. Yeah. Because you that's, consent is, it, consent is the thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't and matter that, what the topic is. Consent, guys, come on. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's the big difference. I mean, yeah, as you put it, uh, the, the persuader will, will make the decision for their customer. They have already decided that that's the best thing that a customer could buy. Um, and the, the person who resonates, um, they leave that decision to the audience. And they can do that. They can trust their audience with that decision because they've started their journey way earlier. They listened to what they have to say. They had those conversations and figured out what their struggles and their desires are. And they can tell a story that leads their audience to that point of no return where they can wholeheartedly trust the audience with making the decision because they have made them see something that they cannot unsee anymore easily, right? And so, yeah, it's your decision, but you're gonna make it in full sight of the truth, right? I love that. And it, that empowered, informed decision making. And that actually goes back just quickly. That goes back to um, the building a story brand model where Donald Miller says, you know, your your customer or your client is the hero of their own story, not you. Yeah, exactly. And so you need to empower them to be able to make that choice for themselves. This is very important stuff. Now, empowering them to do that. You you mentioned something here about um, giving them that transformative information, that, that uh, thing that they can't unsee that's that's a pretty big ask how do we do that how do we give them that sort of realization well one step at a time right um it's not that it, it's very unlikely that you find that magical thousand songs in your pocket slogan that just nails it and you, it's it's all you have to say but one step at a time willing to engage in the conversation willing to listen to the feedback that they that they give there and stopping to be right and starting to get it right so not being frustrated when your first attempt at telling your story probably doesn't nail it and doesn't lead you to that point of no return but taking that as information to refine your story and try it a second time with a slightly different story arc with a slightly different tweak um, taking into account what you've learned in between so where does I know that we very, very briefly touched on in our own conversations in the past, this idea of like the aha moment. And then there's also like, how do you, how are you going to wow your person? Like what, it, how does that fit into this conversation? Um, well, yeah, I think there is a, a, a common misconception here that this point of no return would be somehow related to the wow effect, right? And that's what a lot of my colleagues talk about. And what actually a lot of the communication um, and, and public speaking industry is about um, creating that big show moment that and wowing your audience as much as possible. Uh, but I tend to, uh, to look at that a little differently because I always wondered what use it is when, you're, when you get your audience to cheer for what a great show it's been when what you actually want them to cheer for is what a great idea it is, right? Wow. And the thing is that... Um, Wow effects can actually be bought by money, right? You want you want some wow? Hire Taylor Swift or mm -hmm. do your presentation um, on a roller coaster. That's uh, probably as wow as it gets, right? Um, but it's not going to create any kind of aha. And unless there's that profound moment of insight, that profound moment of where I see, well, that makes sense. And actually, a second layer, and it, not only does it make sense, but it also feels right. Right When those two layers click together, the brain agrees and the gut says, well, it also feels right. Yeah, I totally see that. That's when you reach that, that point of no return. And that's what a wow effect rarely gets you. Well, as I tend to, to look at it is that, well, wow effects have their place, right? It, what's open, it's what opens the mind. It's what gets you the attention. But once you have the attention, you need to lead them all the way down to that profound moment of insight, which is what I call the aha effect. That is really cool. Like truly just, I'm sitting here going, man, oh man, it's that, it's Eureka. Everything going from, I really see this as that, that going from, you're kind of in the fog, 
you're sitting there going, okay, sure. Um, and those wows will kind of catch your attention and you'll, you'll navigate that. Sure. But then once you get to that eureka moment, that aha moment, that's when those wows don't even need to be there anymore because the fog is cleared. You don't need that the lighthouse got, uh, steering you over, away from the, the rocks because the fog's gone and you can see it for yourself. You've got it. You know yeah. the right way. That is so cool. <laughs> I really like yeah. the way you put that. <laughs> and you know what? And often it tends to be that those aha moments aren't fancy or, or spectacular at all, right? Um, these are often actually down to earth um, because actually relevance beats elegance, right? And fans, and tangible beats fancy, right? Going back to that thousand songs in the pocket that we mentioned earlier, um, there's nothing fancy about that. It's a simple statement in plain English. There's no wow about that. It's just stating and, and capturing the desire that people had at that um, th those 20 years back when the iPod was introduced. They just captured that feeling of, man, I want to carry my whole music library with it, with me. And that's just what, what they captured in that. And there's nothing fancy about that. It's just plain English. So, and that means the way to get to that aha moment is to ask the right questions. It's not to have all the answers. It's to ask the right questions. So what's going on in, in my audience is my customer's world. What's causing them a headache? Uh, what's what were the problems that they desperately need solved and then find a way to make that visible using words you find by finding the right words and that's what 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 apple excelled at with with that ipod slogan to to find a way to make visible what a three gigabyte portable mp3 player is right they made that visible and tangible for people who had no idea about what that means and it was so easy conceptually conceptually easy a thousand yeah. a thousand songs in my pocket and i yeah. i can say that you can say my my kids they're five and six nine years old they get it they if i said you could carry that a thousand songs in your pocket they get it yeah it's so and, and again that that that's not the whole story right it, it's no. just the entry point so if that makes me curious i'm gonna go head on to the web page and want to find out more and it's not that that this statement or that that um, that slogan is to replace the whole story. That's not the point here. It's the entrance. It's what makes the complexity that's underneath accessible. It's what makes me curious to want to know more and engage with you. That's perfect. And, and it makes it, I love the word that, that word accessible and also tangible, something that you understand quickly that makes you open the door. Like you said, that's so cool. And then how how is it that you can then play off of the aha and the wow to get yourself noticed to really get people looking your direction um because sometimes you can be saying these profound things without really being heard so where does that come in um yeah i mean the first step certainly is that you stop talking about yourself so much and start start um talking about um what's on your customer's mind and what's going on in their world and how, how that plays to that. Um, that's certainly one aspect, but then there's that other problem that, well, that basically everyone's doing that. It, well, it's very unlikely that you're the only person in the world having that, having had that idea. I mean, it happens, but it's the rare, it's the rare uh, situation, right? Where you have that singular idea that nobody's ever had and it's gonna change the world. So most likely what, what, you, what, what you've what you got on offer is rather similar to what hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people have on offer too. So how do you stand, stand out, out um, with that? Well, by not being afraid and by stopping to, to, to try and be right, right, and, and playing by the playbook. So, so actually a favorite, so I'm, I'm actually a guitarist. Um, that, that's, uh, that's one of my great hobbies. And, um, I, I love playing jazz music. And one of the concepts in jazz music is that, um, you can know all the rules, right? And you can play nice music and beautiful music by following all the rules that the, the brilliant composers have kind of figured out over the last centuries. Um, but, that's just gonna be well nice and beautiful but so it doesn't get you the attention but 
just hit one wrong note and you get people to look over. So what was that? <laughs> and now the brilliant musicians are those that take that wrong note that just happened in the moment, not as a failure, um, not as a mistake, but as a springboard, as an opportunity to create brilliance. So like Miles Davis framed it, like um, when you hit the wrong note, it's the next one that's going to make it good or bad. And and that that's what, what, what counts, right? So when you all only play all, all the nice notes, no one's going to notice you probably, mm -hmm. rather likely. So, <laughs> But just dare to, to experiment, try to, well, to look at so what what's at the edges so what what happens if i go off that rule and just so and even if it doesn't work out perfectly the first time what counts is what you do with that and what happens after you've hit that wrong note that's so it, i just want to say one of the i love i love all of what you're saying first of all because i am a music geek i love all those things the other night my girls were like mom pick a song for us because we've got our old 80 gig iPod, the big the one that's like this big, it's as big as my face. We've got it plugged into a uh, speaker in their room, put something on. So didn't I put on uh, Eric Clapton and the King? It was great. It was so beautiful. <laughs> and the girls loved it. Now, another artist who I love is Jason Mraz and a really famous song of his is I'm Yours. And people are like, oh, that's nice. It's fluffy. I'm yours. Awesome. But there's a moment in that song where he will play, and I know how to play it on the ukulele. He will play a song. Uh, I, I want to say it's the, the flat. I'm not a music uh, savant by any stretch of the imagination. I play the easy stuff. But he plays an off note. I want to say it's flat purposefully. And it you can feel your brain switch when he does that. And then yeah. the next, he goes back into it in a way that re-engages you in the in the music, in the playfulness of the song. And that's what we're doing when we're learning and exploring and, and figuring things out kind of as we go or knowing. And this is kind of part of the, the strategy of, of marketing, knowing what parts of you are going to naturally play that wrong chord in a way that attracts the people who like it. That's why we can play all those. I, I also play piano. But you can play all those sharps and flats on the piano and it'll sound smashing. You're like, yes, let's go. Bim, 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 and you're good. Yeah. If you know how to use those differentiators, those wrong notes, so to speak, to your advantage. Yeah. And the point here is that, well, that's not totally rational, right? It's not 100% rational anymore. Um, you got to trust your gut to a certain degree here. And, um, and, go with what feels right as much as what your brain says is right. Um, so, which is not to say that, well, you should dismiss your, uh, your irrational part, but that, well, you probably cannot fully trust it with those kinds of choices yeah, um, kind of where it's, them, yeah, yeah, just, just exactly. play with them. I mean, can you imagine Jimi Hendrix if he just played by the rules? Mm. That, that wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't make sense. You wouldn't, no. We wouldn't have what we have today from Jimmy. It wouldn't, it just wouldn't be. We wouldn't I, have this burning, is, I love, guitars. Oh, this is a great, right? That's, and I'm just thinking of like some of the sounds that come out of there. Or who is it who plays with a, with a, um, with a British penny? Um, Brian May from Queen, I think. There you go. And it makes a yeah. unique, distinct sound. And like, it does. who would think I'm going to play with a penny? Yeah. Just play. Yeah, actually, it actually, um, if you if you listen to the guitar teacher, all of them wouldn't have made a career, or or like um, like um, the Dire Straits wouldn't exist if if yes. um, if if they would have learned to play the guitar the proper way. Um, that's not that's just not what what those geniuses care about. Well, so and and it's what makes, as you say, their their style so distinct. And the distinctness, the specificity, is what makes people look over. It's not generic anymore. It doesn't sound like anybody else. It sounds like distinctly Brian May, distinctly Eric Clapton, distinctly Jimi Hendrix. I love that. I'm gonna so this this if anybody takes anything from this that last message. Hold on to that because what makes you, you is the thing that's going to light up the sky with your name. 
Now with that, I want to invite you to share maybe some final thoughts, some last minute things that you think, oh, you know, I didn't get a chance to say this. And I really need everyone to know. This is your chance to do that. And of course, tell people where to find you. Because I mean, after this conversation, there are a lot of different people who may want to find you. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think one important one important um, story that um, or message that that's near and dear to my heart is that, well, you're not the star of the show, so it might be um, a good time to step off the hero's pedestal and leave it to your audience and your customers. Because as you mentioned earlier, um, they have a hero already and it's them, right? Um, they don't need another hero. They don't show up to cheer for you. They um, much more wait for someone to show up and cheer for them, to hear them, see them, and feel them, and solve some of their struggles or give them a solution to some of their aspirations. And that much more means, well, stepping off the, the hero's pedestal than, than, than directing the spotlight onto yourself. So turn those spotlights um, around, direct it onto the audience, tell a story. And, and that, that's how you position yourself to, to tell a story that resonates rather than having to persuade. And if that's something that, that you care about, then um, you might want to check out my online course, Crack the Clarity Code. Um, the URL is um, on the screen or in the show notes, crackthecleritycode.com. It's a five-step process where I walk you through the process that I use myself when working with my clients to help them get from a rough idea or that feeling of inner clarity and finding the right words to nail that message so that when they say it out loud and tell other people, they get them, them just as excited about that as they themselves are. And don't we all want to make sure that like when we're telling a story, we want other people to be really, yeah, we love that. It feeds our soul just as much as it feeds theirs, because if you're doing it right, they are that engaged intrinsically, not just like, like ju not just showing, right? We're not just using masks here. So then you've got that, that beautiful engagement on both sides in a way that deeply resonates. And then, and then you start the movement and then you make things happen. And so with that, I want to invite all of you to really think about that, to visit crack the, uh, let me just make sure, crackthecleritycode.com to make sure that you're thinking about things in a way that will start the movement you were meant to start with and help the people who need your help, who really want to take a lead in their world. And you maybe haven't quite nailed your messaging in a way that will get you there, get them there and, you know, crank that engine. So with that, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow, do all the things that you know to do. And we'll chat soon. <laughs> See you later.